As a teacher, instructional designer, or e-learning developer, we're always looking for ways to visually enrich our learning content, to lift it off the page so that it's more than just text. And fortunately now, there are some fabulous sources of free-to-use digital images. Sources like Unsplash, Pexels, and many more that have open licenses that deliberately allow and in fact encourage the reuse of their images. But how do we do that? How do we take it from this flat content to content more like this, where the image is integrated into the, the learning content, that there, where there is layout and positioning of those images. And really importantly, and this is particularly important in the Australian education context, how do we do so in a way that meets our copyright obligations and attributes that image back to its original ownership? So this is the challenging piece. How do we go from these images here, which we know to be free to use, to something that sits on screen and includes that attribution statement. Fortunately, I have a tool exactly for this purpose, and it works with a, a range of free image sites, and I'll list those later. And the way that it works is that once you have it integrated into your browser, again, I'll show you that later in the recording, you can simply choose an image from one of the supported image sites, such as this great image here, and clicking on the attribution maker in your browser, you can take that image, have that laid out for you in a range of different screen arrangements. For instance, to the laying to the right of the text, to the left, maybe full screen. You could even have it with text overlay. But the really important thing I think about this tool is the fact that it includes below the image its attribution back to the source. So it has a link to the original photo, the photo author, the site where the image arrived from, and really critically, a, li a link to the license. In this case, it's a free to use license. In fact, I'll link to that now just to show you. Uh, you'll see that these, the license allows all photos to be downloaded and used for free for commercial and non-commercial purposes, and no permission is needed, though attribution is appreciated. And so we're satisfying the attribution piece in this strategy. This tool also provides some other really nice features for you. You can choose the relative size of the image according to the other on-screen content. So for instance, 50% will effectively fit half of the available space down to 25%. You can choose also whether you want the attribution to be always visible as it is here or collapsed away and a bit more subtle under this show attribution menu system, both of which, by the way, meet Australian copyright guidelines. Now that I've got my chosen image and the layout that I want, in this case, I want the image to float to the right of the content, I can copy the embed code, which is basically the HTML that achieves this layer and the attribution. So I'm copying that. I can also download a smaller version of that same image to my computer. So rather than the original image, which is massive, this is now an appropriately sized image for this screen space. So I've got all of the components that I need. I'm going to quickly bounce over into Moodle and I'll go back to my boring content and I'll see if I can make it quickly less boring. So I'm going to quickly edit this on-screen content and a moment ago, I had copied something called the embed code. Now I want to paste that into Moodle. But I can't just paste it here. I've got to paste it into the underlying HTML. And the way that I do that is in the Moodle editor, there is this uh, uh, HTML edit view. And once you click into that, you kind of see the underlying code that makes this page. And all I really want to do in this instance is put my cursor right at the top of the screen before the opening paragraph there. And I'm simply going to paste the HTML code that was copied previously. And when I return here, you will notice now that I have that image, it's in place. It is serving the function that I had asked it to, which is that it's 50% of the available spot, uh, size. You can see the attribution, currently showing is expanded, but when we save this, you'll see that that will collapse out of way. Also, um, the more astute of you might have noticed that as I hover over this image, it includes things like the uh, alternative text 
This is the another legal requirement in the Australian educational context of whenever you use images, have a, a text description of that image for someone who may be vision impaired. So that's also already been provided here. An important thing to note, however, and I'll just close this down for a moment. This image is obviously being displayed on screen. And at the moment, it's being loaded from the internet. It's effectively being loaded from the Unsplash website. And that's entirely fine. It's, it meets the uh, Unsplash requirements. There's no reason that you can't do that. However, if it was, for instance, that the original artist was to delete this image of Unsplash, this would become a broken image. So there's a double protection, should you wish it. This is now an optional step. If you want to protect against the chance that that image may go down in the future, what you can do in the Moodle editor is to double click on that image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the image into Moodle itself. So you might remember that earlier on, I had downloaded the small version of that image. Now I get the option to upload it. And by uploading it, I'm effectively pre protecting against it ever going away because now a copy of that image is being uploaded into Moodle itself. So now the image again still appears to be there, and it is, but it's being loaded now from within Moodle rather than from the external internet. And so there it is. I've very quickly been able to upload an image, to have it display on screen in the layout that I wanted, um, to include this very important piece of the attribution statement. And I'm now ready to proceed with other learning content development. So let's toggle back momentarily to the um, attribution maker so I can show you how you can add that to your browser and also some of its other kind of hidden features if you like. So here I am, I'm back at the attribution maker and it still has that image loaded within it. It's worth noting that this tool works with a whole range of sites where uh, uh, the, the license allows for reuse. So these are either open licenses, free to use, or Creative Commons license sites. And they include some really important sites like uh, Wikimedia Commons. If you're looking for really specific images that you might not normally be able to um, in, uh, find in a free image site. So for instance, something like an Antichinus, which is a lovely little Australian native. So here we are, we have some really lovely images now. Um, Wikimedia Commons, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's basically where all the images on Wikipedia live. And so if, you're looking, if you've got really specific content and you can't find it anywhere else, then Wikimedia Commons is a great turning point. And the images, as you can see, are lovely. So for instance, I could choose this image and I will open it up so it's full screen. There, here it is here. And like you saw before, I can click on the attribution maker for the, this chosen image. And again, it will do as it did before, load that image in. It will include all the attributions back to the original author. Also um, on Wikimedia Commons, the images have different license types like Creative Commons. This is a buy, which is the attribution type of license. So this license requires us to do this attribution piece. It's a requirement of using this image. So we're meeting that obligation with this tool. And I might choose in this case, this is such a lovely image, I think I'll go for the large screen version. So I'm going to copy the embed code, download the large image. And the process now is exactly the same as it was earlier. I can return to Moodle. I can edit this, scroll down. In this case, I'm going to place it right at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to go right to the end now and paste that in. And then out, if I jump out of code view again, now you'll see that I have that lovely image there. And again, if I wanted to protect against the opportunity that that image might be deleted in the future, I could double click on it, browse my computer and upload the image that I had previously downloaded. So that's a, a sort of optional safeguard step. So that now when I look at this, you can see that I've got my two chosen images in the layouts that I had selected and they include the really important attribution back to the author. So the only remaining step really is to show you how to do this yourself. How do you 
get the attribution maker into your own web browser. So in the, with the video, I will send out a link. That link will take you to a screen that looks like this. It has some first time user instructions. You only ever need to do this the very first time on any one computer. So if you're moving between computers, you'll need to do this setup piece on each of those computers. Now I happen to be on a Mac and I'm in the Chrome browser. And you'll notice that I have displayed here the what's called the bookmarks bar. Now on a Mac, if I go to the view menu, I can turn that on um, here, always show bookmarks bar. On a Windows machine, uh, there are three dots on the left hand side. Then you can go down to the bookmarks manager menu and show bookmarks bar there. So it's a bit different between Windows and Mac. Once you've got this bookmark bar displayed here, under the first time instructions, you'll see a link to the attribution maker. But curiously, you don't click on that link. What you do instead is you grab it, you drag that link up until you're over the bookmarks bar and then you let go. And so now you'll see it displays here the, the attribution maker. And so that's been loaded into this browser. I never need to do that again. And so now that I have that, I can go off to any of these listed image sites. I can find an image that I like. Perhaps it's one of these images here. And if I want to use that chosen image in my e-learning content, I can click on the attribution maker, which is now up in my bookmarks bar. And it will then take your chosen image and load it in the same way that you've seen me do now three times in this recording. There are one or two other little secret features, but you don't need to use them if you don't want to. This notion that you can have text over the top of an image, that might be interesting to you. There's also the ability to choose a cropped image. So if you didn't want the entirety of an image, you can choose a smaller section of the image if you like. And you can, um, using these drag bars, effectively make kind of a narrow banner if you needed such a thing. And you can sort of move that around to select the proportion of the image that you want. Once you do that, you can download that cropped image. And you can also, as I've done before, copy the embed code. So effectively now you'll have the ability to not only choose an image, but crop and lay that out slightly differently than the original author um, had provided it.